Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless here. This is the Out of Doors episode eight with Joe from Survival Attitude. What's up buddy, how you doing man? Long time, long time. It's been a real long time. Oh, how you been? I've been all right, you? Doing really, really well. Good, it's good. It's been more than a year since our last episode. And uh, man, it feels like an eternity, so. It does, it does. Uh, but we're gonna bring it, uh, we're gonna bring it here today. So, uh, you know, with the out of doors, there's a few critical things that we need to accomplish. Always. It's always about some coffee, fire, some food, and playing with blades, right? So today, well, we've come up with a little bit of a topic. Where are we going, Joe? Where are we going? Uh, we're going, uh... Let's pick a topic right now. Why don't we just go bushcraft blades? Bushcraft blades. Well, this is pretty awesome because bushcraft blades, we haven't exactly covered here in the out of doors. You know, a lot of times I think it's pretty easy for someone like me to fall into survival class blades, camp class blades. I'm not the most bushcrafty guy, but I do have to say, I think the bushcraft size class and capabilities are something that becomes more of an everyday knife and a knife that you would typically want to have on your person, more apt to have it than a larger survival blade. Would you agree? Yeah, exactly. And that was something that, uh, you know, looking down the road 15 plus years ago, YouTube, the term bushcraft started, you know, coming out and it just appeared that those folks were rough and tumble, living in the forest, um, sustained uh, days, weeks on end, and not about survival, but about enjoying themselves and using, I think, minimal tools to live more primitively because you're putting that one tool or two tool option, ax, knife, maybe a fire steel, you're using that simplicity in your kit to create uh, fire, prep your food, take it a step further if you had to sustain life, a trap, maybe make a makeshift bushcraft chair right. or a pop-up lean-to wiki up, whatever it is. But now we're modern times, right? And, and that term bushcraft, as we talked, has been so used, so played. So I think today going into what is a bushcraft knife, maybe talking about a little bit of crossover from belt to bushcraft and everything in between and what does it really mean? I agree. What does it mean today? And, and even furthermore, so we're taking the sort of angle of bushcraft blades from budget to bougie. <laughs> And so, you know, and, and, and bougie's a funny term. I'm gonna premise this whole thing by saying budget, I think we all understand that. So if you're somebody that is new to bushcraft and you wanna get started and you're looking to really, you know, get established and you don't have a lot of funds or you don't know where to turn, getting a good budget blade can be a fantastic option. And you're gonna see today, we're actually gonna bring you a whole bunch of different options. And then when I say bougie, well, you can get all the way up through customs and mid techs and really expensive bushcraft knives. Now, the knives aren't really so much the bougie part, but I know I'm a little bit on the bougie side because, you know, when it comes to these really expensive bushcraft blades, I'm always making the excuse and trying to say, well, I can justify buying my new knife. Don't worry, I'll just sell a couple of the old ones off. And it's like, it's always just a little bit out of reach, but I'm scrambling and fighting my way to get to that nice premium blade. It's not always in the budget. So, you know, we try to get what we can go in with these nicer blades. Yeah, it's, it, it, that brings up a really good point. And I think today's options for budget knife, whether it be bushcraft or survival or folder, I think the the quality is is a lot better than it was when I grew up in the, in the 80s. You'd buy a a five dollar budget knife and it'd be plastic with cheap pins and fold over liners and you torque and twist to fall apart in your hand and you still have that gas station option. But the market being more competitive and especially with social media, people are reviewing these items now for the world to see. And listen, at the end of the day, these companies got to make money, so they better put a quality product in the hands of the average, the novice, the experienced user, because it may be the only knife that you have. Um, you also look at um, an alternative approach where you talk about bougie. And, and, and that's something where you could say, hey, listen, if I save up all my money, I'm going to buy one knife. 
and I want that one knife to be reliable, perform, I'm gonna heirloom it down to my children. That's, right. That's great too. Uh, you know, you look at like research. Um, this blew my mind. I couldn't. I still still can't believe it. You know, the movie The Revenant, one of my absolute favorite movies. Right talk about the the bear and, and and the woods and that's a blacksmith knife they all had them right yep from french trapper style to a little bit more forward the nesmic style but blacksmith knives were really hard to come by they're usually a long wait uh if you look at um, inflation back then they say the average knife if you had it custom made uh was about 300 to 500 dollars out of pocket then right wow so think about that. that that's, that's as much as a rifle, but the right. time it took to blacksmith that knife. Today, if you have the ability to commandeer a, a custom knife like that, it may be something you save queen, take it out on a special occasion, just use for kitchen. But bougie is really an eye of the beholder. It has to mean something to you. You spent more money than you needed to. We'll go over that today because for performance versus value, for even budget, low end, may not be much of a difference. Correct. You know what it means? Absolutely. We'll find that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look. Well, so with that, I think we gotta start uh, getting into the blades. Do you wanna start budget or bougie? I think we have to start budget. And, I think uh, we gotta start low to high. All right, so we're gonna start busting out some blades. Let's grab them. Let's do it. Nice. All right, so as we said, we'll start low to high, and I don't think there's any uh, better option for a low under 20 bucks than the Mora Companion. Absolutely love this knife. A um, couple mods to it, and you can do that with the Mora very simply. Um, but at the end of the day, I challenge anybody to have a single complaint about this handle for any size hand and the Ergos. The blade, whether you go carbon or stainless, uh, nice scandy grind, easy to sharpen in the field. Draw a little hole, put a lanyard hole in there if you want. Um, and you know, in the end of the day, you talk about safety, you can't complain about this sheath. This sheath, if you fall, okay, it's gonna stay protected. If you know, water drainage, no problem. Multitude of different colors. Absolutely love this knife. I've had this for about 10 years. It's been through the world and it just keeps going. So that's the more companion. You get these things in like a stainless or carbon, right around 18, 20 bucks. Can't go wrong. The Mora Companion, Joe, are you kidding me? Well, the funny thing about this is we both brought bags full of blades and well, we didn't even show each other what we have. And I think that's important because, well, I also brought the Mora Companion. However, this is the HD version. So here, the heavy duty. So the heavy duty is going to be a little more robust. It's gonna give you a little bit more of that sort of thickness in case you want a little bit heavier of a blade, but it's still going to be cheap. It's that awesome budget. And in this case, you can see bright orange. So sometimes people will talk about color. Joe's was green. This is bright orange. If you drop it in the woods, easy to find it, or hopefully easy to find it. But again, just awesome retention. And if you wanted a slightly different version, they also make more of a bushcraft specific version. The handle is going to be a little bit different. You still get that rubber over molded handle, very comfortable and ergonomic. Good large handle that it fits your hands extremely well. In this particular case, this one is the stainless steel. You see this has a compound grind. It gets a little thin towards the top. So in you know the front of the blade, you don't wanna do too much in the way of stabbing and prying, but the Sandvik steel that they use is going to be an awesome option where it has a reasonable durable edge, pretty easy to service it. You just strop it back to sharp, pretty straightforward there. You do need to be a little bit careful with Scandi grinds because they do go to a zero grind. There's no secondary bevel. So you just wanna be a little bit careful, but at the same time, should be an excellent carving performer for cheap money. So the Bushcraft series, a little bit more expensive than what I would say with the Companion but also just can't go wrong with a Mora. So Eric displayed two nice uh, Moras, a little step up from the Companion, the Bushcraft and, um, and the HD. I happen to have one of each. And just to give you a, a show of different sheath options, same knife, different sheath. Nice Kydex, custom ferro rod, 
tech lock style, actually just a dots lock, but retention is great. If you want a little bit more sturdy or even a higher belt carry option, tons of aftermarket sheath options for those. And I actually took my Bushcraft and I thought about it. I like the sheath because this was a survival kit with the sharpening stone and the uh, fire steel. I put a little bit of fire cord on there, but I also just cut off the uh, clip, makes it was very rigid. And I put a nice uh, leather, uh, somewhat of a dangler. It's got the flex and easy on, easy off. Took me about maybe, you know, half an hour to do. But it's on there real nice and sturdy. And you just take a simple Mar knife, whether you duct tape little survival items around it, or just take it a little step further, add some leather, get some real nice options to customize your Morris and still within the budget uh, family of pricing. Now, Mora definitely set the bar, I would say, early on, and there were a number of companies that kind of, you know, entered the arena for that reasonably affordable, lightweight, and easy to carry bushcraft knife. Now, here you can see this is a Condor, so this is the Terrasaur, a little bit more pricey, just a little bit more carbon steel, but again, another fantastic option. Uh, this particular sheath here is a right hand only sheath, but there are companies that are doing a very similar thing here. This is a Ganzo. Uh, Ganzo is Chinese manufacturing, but you can see here, again, just another nice quality rubber over molded, uh, 8CR14 steel here, so a little more on the budget side. But this particular sheath, which is cool, it is ambidextrous, so right hand or left hand, very, very firm friction fit. This thing is literally going nowhere. And one of my favorite options, the cold steel fin hawk. So this is my son's knife. Uh, he has had this forever. I taught him and trained him from an early age uh, to use this and this is just a workhorse of a knife. Again, that Scandi grind, zero ground, awesome handle, very ergonomic, very comfortable, and a very similar sheath. So whether or not you're going from the Mora all the way through some of these other options, there's a ton of great options out there for that quality budget bushcraft blade. Back to budget, forgot about the uh, Mora Eldris. They're about 25 bucks. You can get them for 35 with a little bit different sheath configuration. This just ran some 550 through. Um, this knife has been with me in the Caribbean a couple times, uh, from diving to uh, opening up uh, raw coconuts, which are tough as nails. This knife has never been rinsed in water. I'm not kidding. Has never rusted. It's a stainless steel version. Any size hand, it fits great. My wife and kids love borrowing it. Um, sharpens easy, it's got that same um, type of grind that, that Eric shared earlier, a little bit thin up front for slice, but when you want to beaver out some wood, more than you need to get right in there. Um, retention's great, it's never fell out. Absolutely a go-to knife. And speaking of cold steel, forgot about the uh, Finn Wolf. The folding uh, bushcraft knife, nice Scandinavian grind, same steel, uh, grivery uh, type handle, you know, FRN injection molded, and fits great, feels sturdy, got that classic cold steel lock so you know it's not gonna collapse on you. Lightweight, 35, 40 bucks, absolutely go to, great little knife. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the budget. I mean, there are definitely other options, but <laughs> that's, it's awesome how this works out, right? It really is. <laughs> and you can see, I mean, we haven't talked about our collections. I said, grab all of your knives that you think fit in that bushcraft style, right? And we went on our mission, we went through our collections, and there's a reason why we have all of these knives, right? It's because we can get things going and get started and play with a lot of blades for reasonable money and they just perform, right? Yeah, it's true. These knives have been in my collection probably longer than the other knives will display momentarily. And I often keep going back to these. A lot of times it's just because of lightweightness or whether it's new terrain I'm unfamiliar with. I got to do a, a high level of bushwhacking to get through branches and debris to find that perfect camp spot. If this thing somehow comes off my belt or kit, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I may even have a backup more with me like a little guy here. But, um, you know, we're showing these knives not just because they're in a price range. 
We're showing these knives because Eric and I use these knives. We trust these knives. We give these knives to use as we teach our children. So we know they've got a strong degree of safety from the retention to the sheath sturdiness, um, rubberized handle or over molded grip. Uh, it's a great way to get started, but uh, you've seen these Maras on a loan. Um, right. with uh, right up to win it, you know, winners right there at the final round. And what they put these things through, if you can't trust that, and that's highly unedited, I don't think it's edited at all, um, we're, we're putting um, a lot of reliability and trust in these guys. And I, I always will, and as the companies uh, grow, Condor, El Salvador, Mara, uh, Sweden, these companies are established, been around for a long time. And uh, I just, I, I love them more uh, every time I use them. So can't deny the, the quality and performance of a bushcraft knife. I just don't care what you say. It's, I completely agree. They get the job done. All right, so turning the corner here, we're gonna start upping the ante a little bit. Maybe you're not ready to go all the way bougie but you want to kind of up the game. We're not talking the Moras, now we're stepping up. Um, you know, there are a lot of really great manufacturers that sit in a pocket, um, you know, and quite frankly, more and more and more, uh, you know, you're getting into all these uh, Chinese manufacturers that are playing in the fixed blade game. They don't do a lot, but they do. Uh, companies like We and Civivi have been trying to do it quite a bit, actually, mm -hmm. lately. Uh, the first one I'm going to break out, and you can see here, um, this is a Civivi, oh, yeah. and this is the Elementum. Now, the mm. Elementum really got its uh, debut in the folding knife, and then they converted to a couple versions of a fixed blade. And I thought you'd like this because I think you're going to like the general ergonomics and the simplicity of this, but again, in my opinion, definitely fits the bushcraft genre. Oh, absolutely. This is a great knife. I have the Elementum folder. But um, one thing about that Elementum, what they nailed is that nice little teardrop uh, smooth out in the handle. And this thing is no exception. Just feels sturdy. It feels nice and smooth. Multiple angles for carving. You get a nice hollow grind there, which I really do like. Um, you know, nice finger guard with uh, kind of a straight type of choil, which you don't touch the blade. So for close up work, absolutely great. The uh, sheath is just screams bushcraft. Nice, thick leather, supple. Um, it's got that character. It's going to build that patina over time. Nice strap. Nice, thick belt loop. Great package for, what, under 100 bucks? I think they still are. Can't go wrong. And I really think this is heirloom quality. Love it, love it, love it. So go into that mid-range, that sub $100, if you want something a little bit more substantial. I'm gonna pull this guy out. Got this over the summer. Uh, Walmart, uh, Swiss Tech is the is the uh, the company. You know, you get a little bit more of a tactical sheath. It's it's plastic, but it has a nice ferro rod. But when you pull the knife out, I tell you what, it is very bushcrafty to me. It's very simple. You get a nice, um, uh, a really slight on the hollow. It's uh, more of a saber, but a little broomsticky just feels nice you get a micarta handle um nice little ferro rod notch even though this is very sharp spine and i think just overall great package for forty dollars um i believe you're going into that you know bushcraft but if you want a tactical look with the ability of performance in cold weather wet weather rain and snow nice uh belt uh carry with hip height with an adjustable clip so if you want to go scout or back or cross draw, it provides all that. I tell you what, for $40, I think this is an absolutely great knife. It looks awesome. You get the ferro rod. So from bushcraft to belt, it is in that mid-budget range. I think you can't go wrong with this Swiss Tech. Getting up towards the upper end of this 
price range again sub 100 uh, this is getting close uh, but this here from Ostop Hell and Best Tech Knives so this is a real nice design very simple this is called the Hedron uh, again you know is this your classic bushcraft shape not quite but again you always end up with a little bit of crossover and oftentimes in this class of knife you get a flat grind high saber unsharpened swedge really nice to do some cracking of wood I like stabbing and twisting and popping the wood open to make some kindling and some tinder just getting everything established d2 that's a steel that for me can really kind of go one of a couple of ways when companies do d2 the right way and heat treat it the right way and you know get it right it's a quality steel it can be a little chippy so you need to be a little bit careful with d2 on bushcraft knives but at the same time it can definitely perform I like this handle this is g10 nice crowned spine that's another thing to pay attention to the little treatments and details because with bushcraft knives you're gonna use them at length and you don't want hot spots so something like this where they've softened out in the right spots crown the spine and when I say crowned you'll notice it is exposed but it's fully rounded over and same with over the top now this is not sharpened so you're not going to be able to do those scraping tasks but from a general comfort and your ability to put your thumb over the top subtle jimping very nice in that regard Best Tech doesn't have a lot in the way of fixed blade knives, but they do have some. And in this particular case, a simple Kydex done well, easy belt loop, just a nice little package. So to me, this definitely fits that bushcraft genre and it fits right in that nice sweet spot in that sort of mid tier price range. So I'm cheating just a little bit because I really am at this point hovering right at that $100 mark. It might be pushing a little bit more. It just depends on where you get your blades. Now one that early on I know I caught Joe's eye, the Yakit. All right, so here, the KNV2. This knife here is a very cool option. I love this. Again, really striking the balance between sort of a hunting style blade and a bushcraft blade beautiful over molded handle awesome blade steel but what you can see in this particular case which is really cool this is a full convexed edge with no secondary bevel so this is going to be awesome for those bushcraft tasks where you get phenomenal carving capability right on that edge you kind of get almost that scandy grind feel but at the same time it gets thicker a little bit faster so it's going to be a durable edge it's also going to give you an awesome splitting capability for me one of the key features with my bushcraft knife and if you've been watching my channel you must know this by now I love making fires so the ability to split my wood is critical and in this particular case absolutely awesome and this is potentially one of the best kydex sheaths you don't hear that click but that's because of the rubber over molded handle zero rattle no chance this is coming out a million different ways to lash this just an awesome package i know joe is definitely a big fan of this blade all right eric you did cheat there a little bit because the yakit is going to put you in that sub 200 hundred dollar range now granted when we bought ours we were a little over a hundred but watching that video, The Great Outdoors, I forget which uh, episode, I held yours, I've wanted it forever, and I ended up picking one up secondhand, and this thing's been uh, beat up real hard. I used this all last summer. I probably processed half a quart of wood with this thing. Um, I did tear the uh, finger guard a little bit, um, just because the wood got in there and it splintered out, but a little super glue. But again, how many knives can you say you could do that to that still keep going, feel great in cold weather? The sheath is fantastic. I know you got a, a tech lock on yours. I kept my factory original, just um, nylon, because it works great and obviously full tang but this knife is fantastic i think it's uh the founder is a big uh, hog hunter out in uh you know scandinavia sweden area but uh, for me i had this on my uh swim trunks all summer swimming diving it held tight never rusted i kept it out and I, I camped for a week in the rain 
and uh, never wiped it off and not one speck of rust. Full size handle, takes all the shock and um, absolutely love this knife. So uh, that's the Yaki. All right, so staying on a little step up from budget, a little bit more mid-range, under 100 bucks, got a couple to show you. Um, and they are variants of each other. I'll bring them right out here and um, show you these guys. First, uh, the uh, Ontario. This would be the Rat 3. Got a nice wood handle, traditional uh, leather sheath, very thin. Not quite bushcraft in a sense of you're not going to get that barrel shaped handle, more of a flat. So a little bit of crossover, a small military companion backup. But I'll tell you what, the, the bushcraft community has uh, adopted these for many, many years, mid 2000s, all the way up. You watch tons of original OG YouTube videos and you're going to see this knife. Uh, these still go for about 70 bucks, made in USA. Um, the SE3 will put you in that still sub $100 range. You get them used for 70, 80 bucks. But what's nice about the SE3, same blade shape, it's full uh, flat. I batoned with this a ton, but my wife's knife here, she's got the um, um, knife connection extended scales, fit even better in hand than the regular. This is the um, regular but more on the contoured handle same steel um, US made lifetime warranty because it handle a little bit longer but these are great for bushcraft you can carve with these things all day you can prep food you can baton without worry just a great great knife great size whether it's be companion or their primary bushcraft uh, these style knives are just great and uh, all under 100 bucks stock and tons of aftermarket uh, options for them. So wrapping up with the SE, and Joe touched on it just a little bit. Now, a knife that probably started life in more of the, and, and I don't know if I can really say tactically inspired, but not necessarily born as a bushcraft knife. But this here, a knife that was actually designed and you know birthed by somebody we can't deny has bushcraft background that's the pathfinder knife company david canterbury so here uh, this is what at the time was called the mountain lion so again right around that hundred dollar mark usually a little bit more we're pushing more towards maybe about 110 and that's for the knife and generally without a sheath so you do actually have to think about your sheath options i have a very simple uh you know this is actually just a, a k bar sheath um, but you know it fits it very well simple nylon not a lot of frills but it actually fits this knife wonderfully and something you're going to notice about most of the knives that we've brought out today is the size class this is about the largest and longest blade that i have here today in the bushcraft genre but you'll notice this does have the scandy grind it has a uh, very nice finish. This is sort of that raw by design look, which is really cool. They leave a little bit of that forge look. Nice micarta scales, very well contoured. What I definitely like is, again, the ability to get over the back of the knife with my thumb. So no hot spots there, which in my opinion is the right way to go. Nice size lanyard tube, so you can get a piece of paracord through there if you want, and just a cool blade. This is going to be a robust option. Look at the thickness on that tip. Very robust in a good square spine, so you can do all those scraping tasks, ripping on the ferro rod, getting some fuzz off a stick, getting down on your kindling. Now, earlier, I did say you need to be a little bit careful with your scandies. This has a little bit of a wrinkle in it. And even though this is a robust knife, I was really rough with this. I pounded it down through a knot doing some heavy batoning. And I have a little bit, hard to see, but it's there, a little bit of a wrinkle. And that's because that scandy grind gets so refined at that edge. So you just need to be careful. Now, I don't think it really impacts performance, but I'm just pointing out that that's a consideration so depending on what you're trying to do with your bushcraft knife the grind might make a big difference so whether you go scandy or in my opinion I always like a high saber grind that does come into play but again 
Pathfinder knife, awesome. Great company, great blades, and again, right in that sweet spot around 100 bucks. All right, so just a couple more I forgot about on the, uh, the mid-range. Um, probably had this about 10 years, the Falkneven F1. Absolutely love this knife, um, use it all the time. Not as robust in the handle as the Yakit, but um, great steel. I don't care what you say, people complain about this sheath. I just uh, put a little bit of uh, Gorilla uh, tape around the retention clip to stiffen it up. I folded back the top snap and this thing flexes nice. It's lightweight but strong, drains well, um, feels safe. Absolutely love this knife. Now this one I'm gonna show you next is, um, they're about 125 bucks and they're very rare to get. It's a maker that sells exclusively on YouTube and they're called Liberty Knives out of Pennsylvania. He buys uh, old Pennsylvania stock steel and uh, does his own Kydex, brass, uh, you know, uh, bolts. And um, I uh, put the ferro rod holder, I made these simple, but nice thick leather. But this knife almost feels like the Pathfinder knife in a way, where it's um, highly handmade, um, it's permanently uh, pinned, and nice broomstick round, you get Coke bottle, thick, um, getting into a um, nice uh, Scandinavian grind. It's got a little secondary bevel on it. But this has been through a lot. It's a high carbon steel, so you can see it will rust. But this is a great knife. And I did sharpen the spine. It throws like a flamethrower. But for, you know, a knife that to me provides way more value than you'll spend on it, something you could certainly rely on, just a great knife. Liberty Knives, you gotta search them on eBay. And uh, well worth the money, in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna turn it up just a notch we're gonna go certainly above a hundred bucks here now the first for me stretch of a knife when I was trying to get a slightly nicer knife and spend a little more money and I was saving up and I was like looking for the one one of the early ones here this here is the woodsman pro this here from Battle Horse Knives. Now, this is going to be your sort of traditional broomstick style handle. You can see it has those awesome fish eye bolts. Really cool. Now, there's a few different blade shapes you can get. This particular one, again, I've always said it, I love the high saber grind. So here, that sort of two-thirds height saber grind, secondary bevel, just a great carving knife, extremely comfortable, and I would say very neutral in the hands. You can roll this around easily. It just maneuvers well. You can get on the side very easily for some of those scraping tasks. This particular knife, I believe this one is in 01 tool steel. There are a number of different steels, A2, O1 in this particular case. I like O1. I think it's sort of underrated at this particular time. It was considered to be more of an upgraded steel at the time, but the market has simply moved beyond it in many ways, but just an awesome option. Very large, oversized tube for the lanyard. Really, really nice. Now, They've always done a great job with leather. Back in the day, this was really the simple way to go. Good deep ride. I love the deep ride on this sheath where, you know, you just have a little bit of that handle left. That's why having a nice lanyard sometimes aids in your ability to get on it. But I don't necessarily like straps, especially when I'm deep in the wilderness because, you know, I don't want to have a strap. I need to get out of the way and then I'm doing funny things with my fingers and then my hands are in the way of the blade as I extract the blade. So having a nice deep ride sheath like this, not quite wet formed. It was maybe a little more wet formed at one point in time. But again, nice quality stitching simple dangler I love that and then again the ability to throw the ferro rod on the side so battle horse knives has a ton of options that are great for that bushcraft genre but another knife in a similar company but you know I would say kin to each other well this here LT right and this here 
Aha, the Jessmic. So Chris Tanner prepared mine 101. This is one of his designs. Now this is literally one of the very first ones um, that ever came out. I got it when they first were released. And you can see here, this is a take on a Nesmic design. So the Nesmic having a real, you know, sweeping belly. For me, I'm not a huge fan of big sweeping bellies. However, they definitely have their place. That curved blade is going to aid in continuous sliceability as you work through wood. Gives you nice ability to work down on a surface. In this particular design, having almost a reverse tonto, so you end up with that drilling capability straight on, almost in line with the handle. Fairly neutral handle, not a whole heck of a lot, and beautifully sculpted. Again, some subtle jimping over the top in that sharpened spine, so comfortable while you're working on the spine. The ability to do the scraping tasks, very cool. Now, I don't really have a true sheath for it. This is just a real cheap sheath, but it does the job and fits in there nicely. This is actually a full scout carry, and this particular sheath having a strap, which again, I say I don't like. Imagine, you know, cutting through that strap and losing the retention. That would be a problem. And so again, this doesn't necessarily work for my needs. I don't like getting my, you know, fingers in the way of the blade as I extract it, but a cool blade. I have to admit, I don't use this a whole heck of a lot, but it's a neat design design and it definitely fits that bushcraft genre. So again, the Jessmic LT right. All right, Eric, it's just funny how um, like-minded individuals have similar knives. Let me pull this out. Oh, you said the Woodsman Pro? We got one of those too. Um, back in the day, these things were uh, sub 200 and now they're a little bit more. Every, everything has gone up. Uh, this is not a JRE Industries sheath, which they use commonly. This was made by um, Ashley Cobbins, in fact. Uh, she sent me pictures of her build. I wet formed it aggressively. Um, but Woodman's Pro in mine is a Scandi. You've got the Sabre. Um, this knife is great. Just nice size, great full size handle. Um, I actually refurbished mine. I just did a little gun blue to bring it back because it was highly patinaed. So that's the Woodman's Pro. And also going into Battle Horse Knives. Ashley made the sheet as well. This was actually a model called the Comanche, which had a very pronounced spine, almost like a bellied spine. I ground it down real hard to bring it more towards that, I guess, bushcraft style. But um, great handle, same thing, Corby fisheye bolts, O1 tool steel, absolutely uh, heirloom quality, great micarta, just a great company and uh, just great knives. Get you into a really nice sub bougie price range, but. Um, they certainly can be relied on and they're very traditional bushcrafty style in my opinion love them both all right eric so a couple knives you may or may not have seen before i'm going to pass them to you to talk about Ooh. all right sounds good we're going to start with the smaller of the two aha um actually close your eyes for a second put your hand out tell me if you've seen felt or know anything about this knife. Right away, this is very light. Um, uh, to me, this is a hand sanded knife, so somebody's put the time into getting the, uh, the tang nice and flush to the scales, which Joe, I know you might have done that yourself, scallops. No cheating. You gotta tell me what you think this thing is. This is like something I would have designed. This is burlap micarta handle scales. Well, my design has a little more peak in the back, maybe. Feels like something I would have designed. Take a guess. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked the peak down a little bit, dude. You I, did? I, of course I did. <laughs> 
Yeah, you got trees. <laughs> What's going on here, dude? <laughs> Tell us about what the boy with this is. You're out of your mind. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so this is uh, my TFK T17.4, and now we're limitless design. Oh, well, that's good. Geez, I'm glad I didn't fail on that no, one. No, good thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great too good. for bushcraft. This is kind of my take on a bushcraft knife, Heck my yeah, friend. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Let's flip the camera around. I'll let you talk about it for a all second. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, so Eric put a lot of time and um, energy into designing the, this family of knives. Um, you know, the Tanev family, uh, Bulgaria, just uh, from what I understand, they listened to Eric's input, they made the proper modifications from his prototypes, and they delivered. And just from performance to aesthetics to quality, you just can't beat these knives. Um, I think you got them um, in D2, and I think it could be N690 if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm a big D2 fan. I think it's a semi-stainless. Um, I get the, the you know the acid like a the acid finish. I don't know if they should just call it a, a tumbled finish, but uh, either way, uh, yeah, they they take the handles they they fit and finish them to every single knife they're all hand sanded just a wonderful knife that uh, from the three a little bit smaller more companion but the four to me starts that bushcraft style series genre um, nice blade guard uh, sharpening choil it's gonna crack the wood when you get to the nice top they just Beautiful knives, nice and lightweight. I believe these are, yeah, they, they are hollowed out, skeletonized in the middle. That's why the balance is wonderful. Um, I could talk all day about these knives, but uh, yeah, great minds think alike. And uh, I'm a proud owner of uh, Eric's entire line from uh, the Tanf family. Um, and uh, just great, great, great knives, great performers. Lots of mods too and customization you can get from Eric, whether it be non-sharpened spine, sharpened spine, um, different finishes, tons of different handle options, uh, different steel types, jipping, non-jipping. Um, yeah, Eric just knocked it out the park with this family of knives. Thank you again. And so, you know, for me, the bushcraft knife, it has to have some simple functionality and that's the key to, you know, in my opinion, proper design is what is the intended use. So, and again, when I said it's light, it's skeletonized in the right places the right way so it's still going to be robust yet perfectly balanced and nimble in the hands this is in and it's not quite a neutral handle but it's neutral enough that you can still roll the knife around easily multi-position grip which I think is critical now I love designing with scallops I also love designing I guess what I'm gonna call tapered through this segment and the forward segment up against the guard and the Picasso so that you can get close and do pinch grips, alternate grips, get your thumb right on the side for good control in those scraping tasks, food prep and digging and all the things you need to do with alternate grips. This is not really a reverse Tonto, but it definitely has that hard drop point, almost a spear point design where you can really do some digging and drilling and it's right in line straight through with the handle, which I love. Again, the ability to get your thumb over the top, round it out perfectly, and then a pronounced guard so that you're not gonna accidentally slide down the blade. I've talked at length today about the grind being critical. Not only are we getting that high saber grind for the cracking action, batoning, but Tana Family Knives really nailing the edge geometry, the grind angle, the thickness behind the edge, that all comes into play and all of that was thought through on these knives. So the T17.4, uh, which is the four inch blade, and then we also, uh, Joe had here off to the side, which is also cool, uh, this here is the dot five. So this gets to the edge of what I would say is that um, bushcraft size and more into to that general camp knife, but right on the edge, very similar in terms of 
all the same features. So you'll notice whether or not you have the four or the five, that is going to be almost exactly the same principles built into both of these for a specific reason. And then in terms of the sheath, few different ways to go. Um, you know, on the four being that bushcraft knife, again, I like having that pouch. So the ability just, you know, to get your knife in there and fairly deep ride. Uh, you'll notice a couple different handle scales. So from the burlap, which is nice and grippy. Uh, this here is more of your resin. So voodoo resin, just a cool look, different, tons of different, you know, abilities to mix and match colors. And then extreme edge custom kydex with a friction fit. Kydex, again, nice and secure. A few different ways that you can get this. I love carrying on my pack, inverted right here on the shoulder strap. Just get the knife out, good and controlled. Just an awesome little blade. So I'm very, very happy with this design. And Joe, I'm pumped you pulled it out and I'm more pumped that I knew what it was when you put it in my hands. So a couple more in the sub $200 range. I'm gonna go two that are into production. One, really um, hit this genre as a production knife. Uh, just some hand finishing, obviously, is the Topps Bob. This is breakthrough back maybe 10, 11, could be even 12 years ago. Um, I really like this knife. It's just robust. It's a uh, long, great size handle, good jimping, strong. It's not gonna uh, spark a ferro rod because I think they use a, a dual temper type of heat treat. A um, little bit harder on the edge, a little bit softer on the spine, but a great knife. Bow drill notch, full tang. I did some polishing as you can see to the jimping because it just softened it up a little bit. When you carve out a while, this is a little bit aggressive, but when you get a good platform, you can do those modifications. Nice Kydex sheath, comes with a great ferro rod. Um, the top's famous uh, spring clip that you can flip around. While we're at that for production, we've done this before. Let's go into a classic bushcraft knife, the SC um, RG3. We've, uh, uh, RB3, I think, yeah. Um, you know, sharp and spine out of the box, great micarta handle, a little bit shorter, I think three, three and a half inch blade, but for bushcraft, to me, this is very much a definition of carve all day, different grips, strong, get a nice low uh, scandy. It's gonna crack wood very early. Nice traditional sheath, which I did wet form. Um, can't go wrong, put a little, you know, linear notch there, a little, I do these little uh, balls I make, so it just pulls it out real quick. But a great, great, great knife. Un, you know, unconditional lifetime warranty, as you know from SE. And I got uh, two more to show you. Um, this, they just discontinued. I think it's the uh, Puko, uh, I think it's called the Model 200. We've actually tested this on the channel before. Uh, 3V, sharpened spine, nice rubberized handle, very much no blade guard, so we are absolutely in that Puko style. Just be careful, but that, you know, gator style snakeskin grip is just gonna lend itself to all different angles. Um, you know, from piercing to wet weather and cold, great knife. Sheath I wasn't a big fan of when it, when it came from Benchmade, but nice uh, Zoni uh, custom leather uh, from eBay. I think these are like 50 bucks. Just a great knife, has a traditional bushcraft look. Um, I can't believe I discontinued it. I'm just really, really shocked because I think it's highly underestimated. Now, my last one in that sub 200 for what you wouldn't think would be a bushcraft knife. I think this is the scrapyard. I think this model is called the 311. Uh, Respirine C uh, rubberized handle. Uh, you do have a high saber. This is gonna be full tang in here, going straight through. Um, their SR101, famous steel, very thick, very strong, very ergonomic handle. Um, no hot spots, just stay in this thing all day. Love this knife. Real light, real strong, and uh, 
custom kydex, a little bit of dangler option here, friction fit. I definitely believe that this fits in the uh, bushcraft genre for under 200 bucks. Can't go wrong with any of the uh, Boosie family or kin of knives. Scrapyard 311. So for me to round out the sub 200 class, and again, at this point, we've been kind of dancing around price-wise, getting up there, a brand that has a mix of sort of your reasonably mid-tier priced and then getting a little bit higher, I would be absolutely remiss not to talk about Work Tough Gear, one of my absolute favorite brands. I design for them, I love them, and I trust their work with my life. So uh, their lead designer, Victor Lin, this here is the Uniheart. So this is at the heart of it, a traditional cap heart design. So here you can see, this is Vic Lin's take. So the modern take on a cap heart design. He does a fantastic job with his handles. This is a handle that you can see translates from model to model. This particular steel SK85, which this is a carbon steel, it can rust, it will patina, but if you treat it well, it will treat you well. Very, very fantastic, just absolutely stellar performance out of SK85. The heat treat from Work Tough Gear is hard to beat. You can see here, it's a simple blade design, very neutral in terms of the shape, high saber grind with a little unsharpened swedge, that's kind of that modern take there, robust tip, very straight in terms of the tip through the center axis of the handle, again, very comfortable. Now Work Tough doesn't do a ton with leather, but they do, and in this particular case you can see that awesome deep ride leather dangler. Just a nice quality setup. I haven't put any finish on this. It kind of comes with that sort of natural and raw look. But again, just a great design. And moving forward, knives that were designed specifically as bushcraft knives. Zeke Minacho, he has some amazing designs with Work Tough Gear. We have a couple of them here. Now, we have an original design here. This here being the Nomad, so you can see the original, um, sort of the Nomad, and, and they have a couple versions, but again, um, you can see a nice belly here, sweeping belly, and just a real interesting design where you end up with you know, sort of that bushcraft style knife, yet the EDC version. So this was originally the Nomad EDC. They've since come out with a version two, which is specifically a bushcraft version, and this one really calling my name. Awesome ergonomic handles, but the straight back design here, that high saber grind, little more simplistic in terms of the edge grind. Both of these in bowler, uh, this is the uh, N690 Cryo, which is just an awesome steel. It's a stainless, uh, so it definitely has that quality stainless property, yet really tough, uh, has good overall edge retention. And what you really do need to pay attention to with Work Tough Gear, their grind, if you look at that, is a mirror polished, just gorgeous mirror polished convex edge, which is striking the balance between your sliceability and that toughness that you need for long-term and prolonged use. Absolutely comfortable, melts in your hands wonderfully. They've been doing this awesome stippling work, just really awesome, two-tone liners. And then this particular version here, polished off with a fantastic and well-formed Kydex. Awesome click, absolutely trustworthy, will never come out. And I've been carrying this with this strap, scout style, actually kind of on my strong side, just right here, nice and concealed. It's just an awesome, awesome blade. So designed as a bushcrafter, I cannot wait to put this to work. It's hot off the press. Get one now while you still can. Work Tough Gear, Zeke Minacho, the Nomad Bushcrafter, awesome. So we've run the gamut pretty much at this point. All the way through your budget options, getting you started, spend a little more money, we're getting confident, but now it's time for booze craft. We're going full booze. Now, uh, way over 200. 
to 200 plus into the $300 mark. For me, my Bougecraft knives are 300 plus. So, I mean, I'm really pushing where I need to think about whether or not I really can afford these knives. And I don't have a lot of them. I only have a few. They're like collector's items to me. I have used them, but I probably could have queened them. Mmm, true, true, true. Um, yeah, so bougecraft, that's when we're going glamping. Yeah, we're going glamping. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? This is the heirloom quality stuff, right? Mm. And, and why, why are they bougecraft? I mean, what makes these knives so expensive? I think what makes them so expensive, number one, it's probably something in limited production. Agree. All right. It's probably something with a higher degree of hand finishing. Yep. Um, maybe a little bit more attention to detail, but certainly, in my opinion, you're going into that rarity where it's a knife that just resonates with you, whether it's the color, shape, whatever, but there's not a lot of them out there. I think they're more of something that this is where I've migrated towards. This fits my aesthetic, okay, appeal, yep. but also something that has to perform. Going back to, you know, um, form of a function, it's got to perform. Um, and when you start to deal with over $200 for a knife, you have the ability to really do a little bit more research because you're not gonna find like 500 videos on a Topps Bob. You may only find two or three videos and a couple Instagram pics. And so you really have to start to maybe communicate to the maker if it's a custom or a company that has a very strong degree of customer service that's more on the intimate side. They may, maybe they have two or three models or sizes in just that style. And you could say, you know, I'd like to get this handle. Can you do that for me? Yes. Correct. Not quite full custom, but more of an intimate build. Um, not, not to cut you off, but then you could say to yourself, the sky is the limit. When you get over 300, you're really getting into full custom. You could spend three, five, six hundred, a thousand. Um, for me, um, that's difficult. You being a reviewer, you get the luxury, okay, of those relationships and the testing, okay. I'm not there, so I've got to be very crafty in how I do it. Maybe it's my one Christmas present, or maybe I had to sell a couple of mid techs to get to meet that higher level. And that's a lot what you're gonna see here. These knives did not happen for me overnight. It's something I had to really work hard and save for, but also make sure that it's something I really, really wanted. So it didn't just, let me order this right now because it's on sale. These things took me a little bit more to make the decision, I would say. I would absolutely agree with what you said about limited quantity. Uh, that's without a doubt. A couple of other things that for me, these and mine, and I want to premise this segment by saying are still technically production knives, but in that mid-tech range, so some hand finishes. The other thing that's key, USA made, and higher premium materials. Good so the, call. the Good materials call. are gonna weigh in on what these cost to make them just because it costs the manufacturers more money to make them. So higher quality materials and USA made in my particular case. True, good call, good call. And so uh, we're gonna get into the uh, production knives here, not okay. the customs, okay. but the production bougie knives. <laughs> and you got some in there? Got some bougie bushcrafters? The, the bougecrafters, what do you got? Let me see. Oh geez, all right, all right, no pressure. No pressure, um, I'm excited. A brand we touched on, and we have uh, tested this before on the channel, um, is the uh, GNS by LT Wright. So it really, to me, meets the bushcraft genre. Um, I'm gonna call it bougie because they're getting into the 240 price range, but you can get it in uh, Saber and Scandi. I got the Scandi. Uh, mine's naked, I have no liners, um, but just fits great. Uh, tons of grip options. A little bit more, I think the four, four and a quarter inch potentially. Um, so length, it's O1 tool steel, which is uh, traditional. You gotta keep it oiled, but it'll treat you well. It's a standard JRE sheath that I did a little over mold because I, you know, when I'm hiking with this knife, I didn't want it to fall and kind of potentially cause uh, artery damage. I like how you did that. 
right? And I also put a uh, um, Swedish uh, uh, 2.0 um, uh, ferro rod on there. It's, it's wild because we easily could have covered this in the prior segment, yeah. but, but you're touching on something which is the current market conditions and how expensive things are getting at this particular oh, point. Yeah. So, you know, where things in this particular steel and with this typical maker, I mean, for example, um, you know, we're creeping up on price these I days. Know. So, you know, where I was able to, you know, get one of these a few years ago in that mid range, now we're getting up in that higher price range. So that's an, an important point. It's a good point, good call. So a little bit more now on the uh, production, but you still have a high degree of handwork. I've had this for a very long time. Um, this certainly was, I think, revolutionary at its time. Certainly crossover, um, I'm gonna have to say military, to outdoor bushcraft um, would be the um, uh, Bravo One uh, by Bark River Knives. Absolutely incredible knife, proven the world over. This is one of the very first ones in 3V. Um, fits great, very skeletonized, very strong. Um, just a great knife. You have a super, super high uh, saber. It is a uh, flat all the way through. Um, you know, nice. I, I get the ramp. You get ramp or rampless. Um, sheath on it was very good. I had a custom one made. Independent maker, but nice fit. Flashlight, compass, uh, ferro rod, I, scammed, I scarfed off of a, a charade. Um, I put the uh, protector plate on it just because it's a little thinner kydex in case you fall, kind of, you know, won't poke through. Uh, you can use a multitude of different leather dangler options, but Bravo One, Bark River, um, these used to be hovering around the $200 price range about 10, 15 years ago, and you still can get them um, for around 200, 250 to 300 or more. You can get pine cone scales, all different handle options. I think this is probably their best seller, and uh, you can get it in a multitude of different lengths. This is the Bravo One standard. Absolutely uh, bet my life on it. Joe mentioned 3V steel, and I think that's important because once you start getting into some of those uh, steels that are, whether they're like a powdered steel or an engineered steel, a lot of times you do end up spending a little more money. In this particular case, this is the Reef Knives F4. So again, you're starting to push that dollar amount just higher and higher. But in my opinion, again, another great bushcraft style knife. Very well fit and finished with the handle scales right to the tang of the knife. Just a very neutral and, you know, again, talking about that neutral, just roll the knife around, uh, multi-position grip. Fairly reasonable guard, a little bit less than some of the others, but again, you can definitely do some of those stabbing tasks, round it over the top, comfortable, chamfered on that, you know, lanyard hole there, which is a nice little attention to detail. Just a beautiful job with the CPM 3V. People have absolutely beat on these blades and they perform extremely well. I love that high saber grind and again, actually, just pointing out that, you know, with a lot of knife designs, there's nothing that's kind of like, you know, there's nothing new. Things are done from time and time and time again. I mean, I designed my knife well in advance of the reef knives and, well, it's pretty darn close. And you could look at other makers, you know, who have done very similar things like uh, Bradford Knives has a very similar blade shape. I mean, you know, not a heck of a lot that's different, but at the same time, it's your take on it. It's the materials, it's the handle, it's the interface with the user that tends to change and advance. Well done Kydex, awesome fit. Uh, pretty easy in terms of the fact that, you know, this has a multi-position clip. It's kind of similar to what Topps does, only this is a, uh, you know, a plastic versus the um, spring clip that you do get with the Topps. But again, a beautiful package. Reef Knives doing a wonderful job, whether it's the smaller F3 here, the F4, and then their larger, the F6. Just an awesome, awesome knife. So the Reef Knives, F4 and a maker that I have really come to appreciate, Tim Kell. 
Tcal knives, so this is their Bushcrafter. So it's, you know, a little bit of a different take on a Bushcrafter, but again, definitely capable. Tcal is more tactically and military inspired on a lot of their designs, also self-defense, but this is Tim's take on a Bushcraft knife. You can see here a real neat pattern. Now this has a proprietary coating on it that if you look, it doesn't look like there's a coating, but there is, and it's very slick. So this will glide through the wood without getting bound up just beautifully done. Uh, in, in modern day, Tim Kell, he's starting to use different steels. Uh, you do end up getting a lot of different options, uh, but in this particular case, you can see with the handle scales, this is what they call the grenade grip. Aids in purchase, locks in very well. Has a little more in terms of indexing than some of the other models that we've looked at today, but again, very comfortable. Another thing that Tim does that's actually kind of unique is his sheath design. It looks different and almost the opposite of what you get from other makers. You'll notice that the bottom actually being that sort of taco style is the direction of the blade, but this definitely will never bind. It does not dull and his fit and finish on his Kydex is insane. It's so perfect. Completely trust this no matter what you do will not come out and he oftentimes will design around concealed carry capability. So you have to trust the retention multi-position clip, just a neat little package. And then, you know, taking that interesting topo pattern, carrying it not only on the blade, not only on the handles, but also on the sheath. So Tim Kell, big shout out, brother. Something that Eric mentioned is uh, with, uh, you know, T T Tim Kell is uh, how you carry it, how you conceal. And to me, having a nice, you know, wool jacket, but you look down and there you've got a full fixed blade. Just, just pull it right out. This knife is awesome. I've never held one. Um, obviously this is something that feels completely custom to, to, to me, but um, having some sort of military-esque look with the bushcraft blade and certainly with that nice, is that flat or is that hollow? I think it's flat going into the high saber. Oh, this thing feels great. What an awesome all-purpose uh, belt knife, uh, bouge craft, but in the end of the day, just to have that sheath design, to be able to just go in, done, do your job, full flexing, don't even know what's there. To me, the carry, the sheath is almost as important as the actual knife. And then to take the aesthetic side with the topographic design, and even mate that with a little bit of like a topo, you know, finish on the blade. That is a beautiful setup. I like this knife, Eric. All right, so we got two more in the production uh, Bouge Craft, and they're from the same manufacturer. One has been around for a very long time, a very early uh, take on something actually called a Bush Crafter is the Benchmade Bushcrafter. Um, Shane Siebert design, um, you know, great, great, great knife. Uh, this one here is in uh, S30V. I had a little mirror edge put on it, but very rugged, titanium, uh, hollow uh, uh, tube uh, slash, you know, not bolts, but hollow tubes. And um, ergonomically, it's a little different, but it's, I think, Benchmade's first attempt at a Coke bottle shape. Um, the flare out in the back is a little aggressive. I just gingerly softened them out, but a great knife, locks in well, very strong. Um, you know, inexpensive uh, Kydex sheaths, this is 40 bucks. And, I, and one of my favorite carries is still that uh, high hip. So the bottom doesn't stick out, you know, dig into your car seat, um, very secure, but a nice, nice knife. Same manufacturer. We have something much more traditional looking. This would be the Benchmade. Uh, this is the Saddle Mountain Skinner. Nice, simple, traditional leather sheath. Uh, I think this is uh, a walnut handle, if I remember correctly. A little thinner stock, 
So you're gonna get that nice slicing ability if you're gonna do some, you know, hunting, some meat prep, uh, some skinning. Um, again, nice traditional uh, wood handle. I think this was S30V as well. Um, just a really nice knife, very, very light, but you're getting into that four and a quarter inch. Um, all purpose, great jimping, great jimping for your forward grip and your, and your, and your um, index finger if you wanna do that skinning. Fantastic all-purpose knife. I think it looks like a bushcraft slash hunting knife, um, but I definitely feel it fits in that um, uh, bougie semi, you know, uh, it, it's, it's not a lot of hand finishing here. This is all CNC'd, but the price. These things will get you at about 240 bucks. You know, um, very, very nice knife. This is a gift from my wife. Uh, she picked it out, kind of keeping it more traditional, uh, Joe, but, um, Certainly not something that anybody could just go to the store and pick up. This is an investment and something I feel I'll pass down to my kids. So the Benchmades have S30V. This here, the Phobos Knives Cacula in S35VN. Now, the interesting thing about this particular knife is this is not really designed as a bushcraft knife, but rather this is more designed as a fighting knife. However, for me, this quickly became what I've classified and coined as my adventure knife. It's very, very lightweight carbon fiber scales, beautifully made, just a gorgeous finish. And it's a slim package when you look at this, even with the sheath. If I took this tech lock off, a very thin, package all things considered so it fits well on a pack it fits well on your belt and it just is that knife that you want with you on your adventure uh, again just awesome ergonomics put your thumb over the top the jimping done well and if you listen to the owner of phobos knives eric hansen every single little touch point has been completely thought through for a very specific reason and this very much resonates with me for those typical camp and bushcraft tasks so i love the size i love the shape I think this fits well with all the rest of the knives that we've talked about today. So even though Phobos stands for four operators by operators, this to me, Bushcraft Adventure Knife. So Phobos Knives Cacula. And last but not least here in the Bushcraft, this here, this is the Bushy. And this is a Dark Timber Mid-Tech. So Dark Timber, uh, often known for the handmade, hand-forged knives, but they do have Mid-Techs that come out from time to time. And the Bushy here, just beautiful. Now this is Nitro V, which uh, for me is a steel that I've really only used on this particular knife. This definitely has some use, not a ton, but enough that I've used it. And I love, love, love this handle you end up with that sort of mosaic look in the handle so you can see just beautifully fit micarta wrapping around through the top awesome liners and then the inset wood just gorgeous this is in my opinion about as bougie as i can get and actually still want to use the knife awesome blade shape i love this knife in terms of the fit in the hand it's about as good as it gets for all day comfort this is a fantastic fantastic blade and then coupled with an interesting take on the kydex sheath so you end up with that full pancake style so you can see here full pancake but then these cool clips which to joe's point when you like that high hip ride literally about perfect you get some flex there awesome clips ease of on and off of the belt just an awesome package so dark timber very nicely done peter kohler design just awesome so that again the bushy all right and for my last higher end bushcraft knife semi-production would be the winkler bushcraft knife and this was in collaboration with blade hq um anybody knows winkler absolutely um bet your life uh, from here and back you know you got the the sheet is fantastic you have uh felt lined kydex leather over so three layer um great spring clip uh high belt carry which is one of my favorites but the blade shape really is a bushcraft knife 
okay you have that uh, nice um, you know pronounced uh, spine thickness this one was uh, actually um, uh, well I've comixed it let's put it that way just brought it down a little bit softened it um, so I really get good carving good control great fruit prep but it just thickens out nice and gingerly and cracks wood like nobody's business um, my car to handle um, this one had like a glass breaker tip on it which I would never put on a bushcraft style knife and I did dig into my palm just put in a grinder and I, I actually had this sharpened where it just threw sparks so well but it was too sharp back here so I softened it a little bit because the spine is plenty sharp to throw um, this will put you into that three and six dollar price range not something you could pick up every day but when you hold the Winkler that 80 CRV2 that American Steel uh, man, American manufacturing in uh, North Carolina Daniel Winkler and his family of knives they're just incredible. You know, if you want to take it out for, you know, a ride on your, in your Humvee, if you're a military uh, operator, you know, that's silent. There's no click, but the retention is very, very strong. And the way they all design the sheaths is you adjust these two bolts in the back and you loosen the, the flare, you loosen the retention. I got it a medium retention, so comes out nice. Just make sure though, with any Winkler knife, you have to be 100% sure it's dry because if it's wet in any way and you put it in that felt lined sheath that will retain moisture and rust the blade out pretty aggressively so just make sure you wipe it down pretty good before you put it away but this is my last in the high-end uh, bushcraft bougecraft uh, I do love my Daniel Winkler knives all right so that takes care of all of the production made and I guess semi-production knives but you can always go full custom if you choose now I don't have a lot in the full custom genre in the bushcraft genre um, so you know I'm a little limited I really only have one and I know you've seen this guy before um, I got this a long time ago but this is my Wayne Walker bushcrafter which I know you've seen some Wayne Walkers and I feel like you even might have one might have one I left it upstairs that's fair no <laughs> worries <laughs> but I know it's uh, it's a proven knife uh, it has been tested yep um, and when I saw it I had to buy it from you um, absolutely love Wayne Walker from his scales custom scales on your yep. TFKs um, you know what's something this is a really cool shape because it's got a nice forward cant but when you're doing that slicing um, it just food preps like nobody's business but at the same time the handle it just melts in your hand almost to me one of the best handle options in all of these for comfort um, you get the nice nice finger trail that just slightly rolls into a little bit of exposed blade steel um, it batons very well um, just an awesome awesome knife and I'd and, say this uh, particular model does tail pretty well into hunting like if you had to do some skinning and some you know processing right sure so. sure especially with that little tight you know hook in the back at the pommel you just bring two three fingers back on it so you can get even more forward control um, an awesome 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 blade and uh, this is a true custom remember when you got the pair yeah I got the early pick, video for pick you everything about it you know I design, you know pretty much designed it with him which was really cool so probably my first sort of custom knife in a way and uh, you know fits that bushcraft genre so it does what about you um, oh geez don't get any more into some customs all right fine 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 <laughs> so I'm gonna show my daughter's custom and I got this on Etsy a long time ago I have four knives from this maker um, uh, Dale uh, Shaw is his name and he retired early believe it or not in knife making uh, right about maybe 40 years old because his son was getting of age and he wanted to spend all that spare time hunting so it's funny how some makers come into it then back out maybe when his son goes to college or whatnot he'll start making them again but uh, this knife is cool. It's fully commandeered for my daughter. A little bit smaller size uh, ha hand. Um, very bush crafty. Um, very, very, very thick. She has batoned a lot of wood with this. Um, she didn't notice as an option, but Dale's like, sure. He hand poured the uh, glow acrylic over a pine cone that I sent to him. 
and so it's got a little bit uh, made in Texas, but it's got a, uh, a northeast pine cone in there. Oh wow! But just a nice feel, and you can tell it's it's a shoe's a smaller hand. Right, I see what you're saying. So yeah, that is the thing about customs, where you know when you really want to fine tune it. Yeah, you can get it literally perfect. So that's a, that's neat. This has like a nice weight to it. It's it feels robust. You know, you can see real nice and thick on that spine. That's pushing certainly three sixteenths. It might be thicker, but between a quarter, getting closer to a quarter. So I mean, definitely some some good weight to it. Uh, the handle, nice and rounded, fully contoured, has those uh, fisheye bolts again. So yeah, really cool. Yeah, and, and again, he does great Oof. leather work. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yep. sharp. Yep, does great leather work. And for her, because she's much more of a, a hiker, um, she's on the move. And so I wanted to make sure we get a nice kydex for her. But I wanted something a little bit more organic, and I had him put a nice little leather backer on it with a kydex uh, you know, clip. So Very cool. uh, she's gone through fur rods like nobody's business. And uh, so, <laughs> but but a little thing you buy little plastic caps so you don't so fall, out fall out. Yeah, yeah, she's actually used a hair scrunchie too, which yeah. I know you and I have done. Yeah. But uh, this will get you into that uh, uh, under 250. Um, but again, it was a couple years back. But you know, you can go to great sites like Etsy, um, and there's a ton of handmade makers out there. And um, so this is her fully custom knife. She's had it for about 10 years now. Um, and do you want to roll into you have any more? Do you want to show? I'm out, custom? man. What do you mean you're out? I'm out. The I'm... classic YouTube tier one reviewer is out. I have. I don't have a lot in, in the way of customs. So not, lat- not, not in the bushcraft so, genre. So my latitude's got to throw some more down range. Yeah, one uh, more, one more. Let's what see. one? One, three, five. All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll keep this video short. Um, keep, yeah. This, this this is a safe queen. Um, it's been on display in my, my bookshelf. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, this is a Jeffrey Wiggins Greenman Forge out of Yorkshire, England, and um, you know they make some great knives out there. Very traditional. Also, uh, he had a number of pine cones that he picked. I um, I selected through imagery the one I wanted, and he hand pours, and very much uh, bushcraft. Um, I wanted it as a bushcrafter. Um, very aggressive Coke bottle. Very beautiful. A high degree of forging here. Um, his wife makes the leather sheets, which are a little bit more rustic but thick. She hand stitches, and you can tell it's uneven. And we're not talking the stamp. She hand stitched each hole. But um, really, really cool knife. Nice uh, eighth inch stock. Yeah. Uh, you can see it has the maker's mark on the side, matches in with the leather. Um, really, really cool. Uh, nice sort of blue undertones and a little bit of green in there the pine cone and the pine cone actually aids in a little bit of grip which is interesting yep yes so neat um and again you know how much are we talking here i mean price wise believe it believe it or not he is he fell into the the mid all his knives are under 200 bucks wow and 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 and, and you're going to pay about 30 bucks plus shipping to get it from there to here but um, just a nice knife. There's no two that are ever alike. That's the one thing about Jeffrey Wiggins, Greenman, and he is an artist. You gotta check his website out. No two are ever alike. Um, just very, very happy to have one. Nice. Yeah, I got a couple more to show you. All right. So that's a UK maker. And my last two. A guy that I just love, I really do. Uh, combat veteran, uh, uh, younger, um, probably around 40 years old now. Um, Virginian uh, is Kyle Taggart over at um, Marauder, and uh, I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded because when you find that maker that you you build a relationship with, he listens to you, he's friendly, he meets your style, um, sends you pictures of the build. I've got five of them, and these two, I feel, are in the bushcraft genre. Uh, This one's got a dyed um, maple burl, uh, and this one is in a 4V. Oh, wow. Um, Both quad liners, uh, two on either side. Uh, Same uh, exact shape. I have one maybe about 10% bigger than the other one, but he um, will work with you and just does the zone kydex does his own veg tanning, which I think is really cool for the sheath, but just feels great. 
Um, got character, no two ever alike. That one's in G10. This is in the uh, blue diet, the, the maple burl. And um, just got a great feel. If you uh, hold them, they're a little familiar. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I mean, of all the knives we looked at today, these are up there in terms of the quality. I mean, right up at the top in terms of the fit and finish and the overall presentation. And just the way, I don't know, it's something about the way the steel looks. You look at it and you're like, yeah, you can tell that's done well. So this one's, yeah, I see what you're saying, a little thicker on that one, right? Yep, just a little bit thicker. Yep. Um, the steel type, and you told me, so the G10 versus um, you know, uh, micarta or wood, they all have different weights, mm, mm -hmm. different balances. Now, these are non skeletonized, he's a very traditional maker. Um, but it's funny how uh, just a hair and a thickness, different steel, different handle, the weights are totally different. Completely different. Completely yeah. That's a it actually, beast. Th I would almost go as far as to say these are distinctly different knives. They really are. Same shape, but the handle and material is just so light and different. Very lightweight, but strong. But again, it's just that maker that I'll buy from for the rest of my life. And all of his stuff with Kydex and Veg Tan, he makes his own ferro rod holder and ferro rod. I have those. But this is just a you know different one. They're all under two fifty. Wow. And it includes shipping. Great Instagram, a Marauder knife and tool. But um, I thought these fit in the bushcraft genre. These are my last uh, custom bougies and. Um, to fit that genre, so. I love yeah. it, nice job. All right, Joe, that was the Out of Doors episode eight, talking bushcraft knives from budget to bougie. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Joe, what do you think? Give us a final wrap here. Um, it's amazing, I've, you don't realize when you, when you collect, you go back to your archives. Some things have sat in the safe for years, but you always know it's there. In the end of the day, I think that, and I told my daughter this, um, I said, Emma, the reason why I've got some expensive knives, and that's more of recent, is it didn't happen overnight. Um, I've learned, I've, I think I've earned the privilege of getting to that level because I've saved my money, I've sold and traded a couple, but in the end of the day, uh, one thing I've realized, and I think you have too, is that, uh, from 18 bucks to $360 plus. Um, if it means something to you uh, and you enjoy it, um, that's all that matters. It, it doesn't matter, low, medium, high, bouge, ultra bouge, whatever it is. Use it or safe it, but, but also look back to how we've progressed. Um, we've learned what we like. We had some degree of customization that means something to us. It's our style, it may not be for everyone, but your collection can often dictate your life's journey in the out of doors, um, bushcraft, camping, and even collecting. No, I love it, I love it. And you know, even though we've both had very different life experiences and come from a very different direction in many ways, we actually have come here not over knives today, but over the types of knives and the similarities in our collections. But you can clearly see, you know, from things that are the same, even the things that are different, it's driving a passion, it's driving a dialogue, it's driving a conversation. And the knife community in that way is absolutely amazing. And so to, you know, walk, yeah, walk in here today and, you know, to both have things that for us, you know, have been this common bond, you know, that is knife collecting. And for us, that is the out of doors and bringing all of this from us to all of you. So with that, Joe, uh, we actually do have a part two here, which is using these. So uh, we have some fire prep, some coffee we need to drink, some food prep, and we're just gonna enjoy some of these. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. This puts a wrap on part one, but part two, let's turn the corner. We're gonna get into some field use. Let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm cold, I need some coffee. So let's, let's work these as intended. I love it. All right, let's do it.